previously on Adequately Advanced Magic. Um, do you guys want to continue with the next to-do item on our list? We needed the funds, right? Yeah, we need to open a bank account. The three of you head inside the bank. The manager comes over and he says, Ah, yes, I see. Unfortunately, our, our account manager is out. Well, we were kind of hoping, you know, to get this done today. If you want, I guess maybe we can check on her. And he says, uh, yeah, I could, if you guys wouldn't mind, I guess. As you do so, you see a single studio apartment with much of the space filled with comic books. Except there's a couple of more educational books hidden amongst the numerous comic books. There's a couple on finance, there's a couple on art, and there's also like a couple on mushrooms. Having heard Cayenne's accidental bump against the side of the closet and the growing smell of sewage, you very quickly see that there's like this uh, this hidden door in the closet. Bob, Ella, and Steve roll out into what appears to be the maintenance room. We're going to roll initiative. Welcome to Falcon's Reach, a city in which magic is technology. You're listening to Adequately Advanced Magic. Bob, Ella, and Steve roll out into what appears to be the maintenance room of the apartment with an apparent path leading to the sewers. In front of you, you see a gnome, a female gnome, wearing her pajamas, who is tied up and also hanging precariously on top of a boiling pot of what smells like sewage water. Ew. Oh. Surrounding the pot are three grungs, humanoid frog creatures who seem to be dancing around angrily as they're about to apparently boil this lady alive. As the three of you tumble in, the frogs have like a look of surprise on their face. We're going to roll initiative. Me included? Yep. Ooh, 19. Five. 16. Ella and Steve... The room is about 30 feet by 30 feet. Sitting along the sides of the walls are several paintings, all of the same thing, and one of them has a mushroom growing out of it. At the end of the room, there's this pot, these three frogs, and the apparent account manager. There is a doorway on the right that apparently leads to the sewers, and another door on the left that would presumably lead back into the apartment. The frogs which for some reason are wearing diving suits, because they really need it, pull out daggers and short bows as the three of you plop onto the ground. And we're going to start with Roy, or Steve. How far away is Steve from the door that leads back into the apartment? It's about 15 feet. Okay, so Steve runs towards the door that's closer to the apartment, or leads back into the apartment, and he tries to open the door. Try to open the door. It's locked. Steve laments his luck. Why is Steve trying to dip out? How big is there like a a decent size like gap either on the sides, top or bottom of the door? Yeah, it's like one of the ones with bars. Oh, okay. So you can kind of see through it and there's bars. Yep. Uh, In that case, Steve whips out the horn and he blows towards the door entranceway. Hopefully, Cayenne can navigate to this door. He blows so loud. Yeah. You run past a couple of paintings as you do that. I don't like how you keep saying paintings, Joey. It's just... Huh? You keep saying paintings, and it's like they're important. I know they're important, but I'm just scared to see what's going to be on the paintings. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <sighs> Steve doesn't know this. R- Roy is scared of the paintings <laughs> and what they mean. But Steve doesn't care about them. He just goes to the door and yells through the horn. The first frog jumps over to you, Steve, and he's going to try and dagger you. He rolls an eight. He misses. And it's Ella's turn. So you told me that I needed a character reason for how I could charm someone. <laughs> or hypnotic gaze someone. I guess te- I guess they're not close enough to me. How They're like 
Are we like 10 feet away? The one that flopped over to the Roy is about 25 feet away, and the, other, the others are 30 feet away. Oh, wow. Okay. Then I'm going to pull out the Magitek. I feel like Shatter. No, can't do that. Hold up. <laughs> why, why not? Let's do it. I don't want to hurt our poor account manager. Uh, I think it would be fine. <laughs> we'll see, though. I mean, depending on where you aim it. Each creature <laughs> in a 10 foot radius sphere. Yeah, so just, she's floating. How high in the air is she floating? Or being held not, how, how high in the air is she being like suspended? Yeah, Joey, 10, within 10 feet. More like five feet off the ground. The yeah. pot is like, the pot itself is like three feet. Oh yeah, okay, maybe not. Mm. Okay, I, I'm i gonna pull out the, the witch bolt then. Yes, do some force lightning. Yes. Palpatine shit. The, yeah, so I, I'm gonna roll for that. Okay. Uh, that could have been a better roll. <laughs> so I got a 12. Um, I should say who I'm hitting. Uh, I'm hitting one of the two by the cauldron. What was it that she suspended over? Yeah, like the the boiling pot of sewage water. Ugh. ugh. Yeah. You. Your 12 does not hit. Sad. The. You pull out your witch bolt, which is usually in rifle or shotgun form, but not in this particular situation, and the rifle and shotgun are also there for their form factor to allow you to aim. In this case, you pull out your witch bolt magitech and you just blast the wall. <laughs> the frog monsters duck out of the way. So sneaky. The two frogs that just ducked out of the way, they make a weird frog clicking noise and they're both like, oh shit. Ugh. They're both going to pull out the Magitek for bark skin, and they're going to cast it on themselves, and you see just this wood-like armor appear over their skin. And then they're going to pull out short bows and move into the corners of the room. It's Cayenne's turn. Okay, it's gonna be tricky. So Cayenne has heard the horn blow off, I'm assuming? Yep. Okay. I start running in the direction that I heard. I'm like, oh no, that means trouble! And I start running in the direction that I perceive the horn to be blasting. Uh, I'll give you like a free perception check. Oh no, the five. <laughs> Some of the sound comes in from the vent that Steve and Ella just climbed into, but you also hear the same sound coming from down the hallway. I yell into the vent, is ever, uh, are you okay? Would my voice carry that far? Yeah, it might come out like a little bit muffled on the other side, but it does come out. Okay. Steve's like on the other side of the room, so I don't know if Steve will hear it. We'll say the two of you hear it. Okay. Are we allowed to have any sort of back and forth? Maybe since people are already, maybe on their turn. Okay. Yeah, I say with a five perception check, Kyan probably wouldn't know where to go. So he's gonna try to yell for his friends to figure out what he should do. It's back to the top with Steve. Steve yells out, Cayenne, there's another door down. Find it. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, Steve turns back to the, the frog in front of him and he will use his action to summon the Eldritch Cannon using the Magitek that like self-assembles itself. So he throws it on the floor in front of him and a small cannon forms. Nice. And he uses his bonus action to command the cannon to fire at the one that's closest to him. And instead of a flamethrower head, the cannon's front has two, like, arm shapes for a ballista. So it actually shoots a force projectile at the creature. Hmm. And I have to look up what it's to hit us. Range spell attack. Okay. It's 22 to hit. 22 hits. And... It does 2d8 force damage. Terrible. Four force damage. And it's pushed five feet back. Yeah, what does it look like? So as the cannon arms like retract, a uh, shimmering like force bolt appears. And in a quick thump, the force bolt flies forward, impacting the frog creature, causing it to flail and stumble back five paces. Yeah, the frog goes ribbit, and it gets pushed back five feet. It waves its dagger around wildly, and it's going to do a running charge at you, Steve. Okay. And it rolls a 11. Misses. As the dagger comes at Steve, Steve 
does like a the limited martial arts training that he had. Like his left arm comes up and like pushes it out of the way, hitting the other guy's arm. Nice. It's back to Ella. Oh man. Okay. Are they still by the cold? Or is the one I attacked still by the cauldron? They're now in the corners of the room. Ugh. So about thirty feet. Still thirty feet. Excellent. <laughs> Let's see. Are they? 15 feet from the poor account manager? Not really. The account manager is dangling from the the center of the room, so like they're in the corners of the 30-foot room, so they're each about 15 feet away. Yeah, that's inconvenient, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, I guess I could do uh, shatter on the corner of the room. Yeah, that sounds fun. Let's do that. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I uh, take out the Shatter Magitech and aim it towards the one on the right, I guess. Mm -hmm. Making sure to center it on him so it doesn't hit the account manager. They roll an 18. That's really inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> Starting a taco stand is so hard. <laughs> but they still take half damage. I don't know what it is about the wizard class that just absolutely doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Such magic. Such magic. It's like, what's going on with all that magic? Mm, let's see. So, 13 divided by 2. It wasn't a great Seven. roll. 7. Thunder damage. Ouchie. Ouchie. Ouchies, ouchies. So, I make a really loud sound with the magic yeah. tag, And it pierces their ears, or his ears, its ears. Yeah. You, you catch Shatter in the corner of the room. And it just makes this loud ringing noise where everybody is just like, mop. 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 The frogs go ribbit. It does hurt the one in the corner. <laughs> the one that is closer to Steve opens fire with its short bow. And it rolls a 10. You're invincible, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve's kind of like next to the cannon and it kind of just glances off the cannon's armor. The other one is going to aim at Ella. And it rolls a 22. Oh, God. Okay. No. Yeah, that hits. For sure. It does eight damage. And do a constitution saving throw. No. 14. You pass. Yay. The arrow nicks your shoulder, causing not an insignificant amount of pain. But unbeknownst to you, the poison that was on the arrow doesn't manage to enter your bloodstream. It's magic. Kayan, it's your turn. Because we we took such pains to describe just how loud that shatter was. I assume that Kyan also hears it. Yeah. And also remembering vaguely that he heard the horn coming from down the hall. And given what Steve says about there being another door, Kyan starts running in the direction that he heard the all these noises coming from. Yeah. And he'll use all he he'll use his entire turn to to run to move in that direction. So that would yeah, that'd be up to sixty feet, I guess. Yeah, we'll say you leave the apartment and run 60 feet down the hallway. As you do, you come to a screeching halt as you look through another set of barred doors and you see Steve, who is down a 30, unfortunately, another 60 foot hallway. <laughs> oh no, Steve, are you okay? Fine. I'll be there in 12 seconds. <laughs> there is a door in front of you, chained and locked. And also another door 60 feet down where Steve is standing next to. It's back to Steve. About to go nuts on this door. I was just picturing when you said that the doorway was like 30 feet and then 60 feet. You know, they do the camera trick on the hallway where it like pans back, but it zooms at the same time. <laughs> so it makes the, the hallway look extra long. <laughs> uh, so meanwhile, Steve is in melee with one of the frogs, right? Yep. Hmm. Okay. Steve will use his action. He will pull out a pair of Magitech and Magitite, and he slams his hands together in the middle as it casts Thunder Wave. Actually, before he does that, he checks to see how far away the lady in the middle of the room is. The lady is about 15 feet away from you. Well, really like 10 feet away from you. Okay. Steve does not do that. Steve uses his action to... Ugh, these are all terrible options. He'll use his action to dodge while he has the cannon open fire on the creature next to him. Mm hmm So... That is a... 23 to hit? 23 hits. 
And it does 8 force damage, and the creature is pushed 5 feet back. Yeah. It pushes the frog creature back again, except he's going to run up and charge at you again. He's really angry for some reason. Wait, wait, wait. before my turn is over, after he's 5 feet away from me, I run away. <laughs> with, with my movement. Where do you run? The opposite corner of the room. So, the so back, like the back, back right, right corner. corner? Okay. Yeah. He charges after you. <laughs> <laughs> does he just Ella get an opportunity attack? Does he run past Ella? He can he he can avoid her if he wants. Oh, he think. goes he goes around. Okay. Yeah. But does he? No. Instead. <laughs> oh no. Having seen you run into the corner, he's just going to target Ella instead. Oh, that's not the ideal. He runs up and he's going to try and dagger Ella. No. And he rolls a nineteen. Oh, why? <laughs> why is why is Ella getting so fucked up? In this? <laughs> oh no! It's six damage, and go ahead and roll another Constitution saving throw. Nine. This time the dagger pierces your, skin and you feel poison coursing through your body. Uh oh! And it does two damage. Oh my! Two poison damage. <laughs> is Ella okay? She's like on. The literal verge of passing out. <laughs> oh no. Wizards. She is hanging by the skin of her teeth right now. <laughs> she just, she obtained 16 damage in these two rounds. Ella, it's your turn. <sighs> Alright. I, so another wizard question. I have so many. I don't know if any of these are good up close. So I feel like I should just fight a dagger or something. Anything that has a like a spell attack where you roll, uh, if you're in melee, then you have disadvantage. But anything that is a, a like a saving throw for the enemy, then there's no effect on your spell for that. Anything that causes a saving throw? Yeah, it doesn't matter if uh, there's someone in melee with you if you're doing a saving throw spell. No effect, meaning it's it works as normal. Yeah. So if I did burning hands, where I yes, that's actually really good. Okay, I'm gonna burn. do that one because Ella's on her last uh, <laughs> little breath of uh, consciousness right now. So, Ella, you pull out the Burning Hands magic attack and you cast it on the Grung. Grunge. <laughs> they roll like what? What saving throw is it? It's a uh, dexterity. They roll a six. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boy. <laughs> Ella just shouts that out. <laughs> All right, so a thin sheet of flame shoots from my outstretched fingertips. Okay, so I can roll for damage. Well. Damage? 12? Yeah, 12. Damage. That is a really good roll. Yeah. This particular frog creature looks like he's about to die. But, like, not yet? Not quite yet. You blast him in the face with a thin sheet of flames, and <laughs> he does—he particularly does not like it because he likes to be moist. Ha ha ha, dry skin for you. <laughs> <laughs> the two frogs in the back are going to raise their short bows and try to shoot Steve. First one is a unnatural 20. Second one is a 21. So, those are with disadvantage, right? Oh, because you're dodging? Yep. Alright, well, we'll just say the first one is a 20. Okay, that hits... Second one is either a 21 or a nat 1. Uh, well, the nat 1 misses, but the other one hits. Yep. The first one is the arrow nicks you in the thigh and it does four piercing damage. And go ahead and do a constitution saving throw. Four damage. It's going to be a nine. You fail. You take four poison damage. Ooh. And it's back to Cayenne's turn. Seeing Steve get hit by... Well, wait, do I see Steve get hit by arrows? Mm, not from this angle, actually. Okay. Hearing the sound of Steve getting hit by arrows, I <laughs> rage, get very angry. Grr. <laughs> Tacos. Tacos. <laughs> and I'm going to try to force my way through all these doors. Yeah, do a strength check. Okay. I get extra, extra powerful on strength for this. So. I get advantage on strength checks. It'll be either a 22 or... Yeah, it'll be a 22. Yeah. You burst through the first door and you burst through the second door. And I'm like, oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's probably my entire turn because I that was yeah. 60 feet of movement. Yeah, you, you run 60 feet down this narrow hallway and you burst out and, like, everybody is, like, gasp. It's time. It's taco time. All right, it's back to Steve. Steve 
seeing Ella once again on the cusp of death, <laughs> runs up in front of her and puts his hand on her shoulder to cast Cure Wounds. My man. <laughs> My man. Oh, nice. Full healing. Eight wow. plus three. Eleven health points. That feels good. And he kind of like stands in front of her in regards to the two uh, frog creatures in the back and uses his bonus action to order the, the cannon to shoot the, the closer frog creature. Yep. The, the one in the corner or? No, the one by Ella. Okay. That's a 10 to hit. A 10 misses. The force bolt ballista flies past the frog and narrowly misses your head. I give it the stink eye. Bob does like a... Sorry, bro. Uh, that's it for my turn. All right. The frog, with his dying breath, is going to try and stab Ella. No! <laughs> he rolls a nine. Ha-ha! That does not hit. He flails wildly as his skin gets sort of crispy. Ella, it's your turn. I'm still, like, up in his face. Or no. Did, like... Mm-hmm. Did Steve, like, push me out of the way? Or I don't... Can't picture mm, it. No, I'm... I'm like standing, we're like in a little triangle. Okay, like a triforce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> yeah, so what are, what are you casting? The burning hands again? Yeah, I'm doing burning hands again. And I'm aiming the foot cone away from Steve. Mm-hmm. They roll a 13 on their dexterity saving throw. <laughs> okay, so if that matches, who wins? They pass, yeah. But they still take half damage. Boo! So, ten, so five. The wounded grung frog creature in front of you incinerates. <laughs> and it makes a very sad ribbit sound as it dies. Ribbit. Ribbit. Sad ribbit. The two frogs in the back corner rage, but they don't. <laughs> Instead, they open fire with their short bows. One of them will target Bob. And rolls a nine. Is he targeting Bob or the cannon? Because they are different things. Bob. Bob. Oh, no, Bob. He rolled a nine. Yep. Bob does some kind of kung fu move and knocks the arrow out of the air before it hits him. <laughs> the other one in the back right corner is going to shoot at Steve. and rolls a 15. Steve, uh, with his uh, years of police training, reflexively activates a shield magitech. Nice. The arrow bolt is blocked by the shimmering magical force barrier. That's it. Cayenne, it's your turn. Okay, so seeing how these grungs have targeted and attacked with varying levels of success against my friends, Cayenne will... How big are these creatures? Small. Okay. Cayenne would like to pick one of them up and throw them into the pot of boiling sewage water. (laughs) (laughs) All right, do a grapple check. Grapple as, I believe, athletics on my kind of things. Which is a strength check, which I have advantage on. They roll a 16 for dexterity. Okay, well, this actually was not that great. Let's see. But I do get a... I don't get a on that. Yeah, that was an 11. They're so, they're so heavy. <laughs> they're very you, dense. You run up to the, to the frog creature in the corner, and you try to grab it with both of your hands. Attach the arms. <laughs> and there's this sort of, like, this awkward, like, squeezing sound as it, like, pops out of your grip. So, so slimy. Yeah. Do a constitution saving throw. Okay, constitution saving throw. Oh, I have a bonus on that. Which is good, because that's 20. Yeah, your your hands tingle like they've touched some hot jalapenos. <laughs> thinking about tacos, and also thinking about this failure, and also thinking about, like, would, fro- would fried frog make a good taco? Uh, mm. Cayenne's rage soothes, because I did not get attacked or actually attack anything during this turn. <laughs> Robo. But that's the flavor I've given it. All right, it's back to Steve. Steve takes a look at Ella. How injured does she look? She is... She's okay. Like, she's had better days, but she's doing okay. Okay. In that case, Steve directs the cannon and Bob to open fire on the uh, grung in the back right corner with his bonus action. Mm Mm-hmm. And that went off the table. Hold on. If only you had a dice tray, Roy. Uh, That'll be 11 to hit. 11 does not (laughs) hit. For his action... What is his action? The uh, grungs are more than... They're 30 feet away from each other, right? From each other? Yeah. Uh, They're like exactly 30 feet from each other. Ah. 
Well, then um, Steve will then once again put his hand on Ella's shoulder, use his like a little minor magic tech to do three hit points worth of healing from his hands, which is actually an Asimer ability, but it's like a leftover cure wounds that just does three hit points. Mm-hmm. The ble- and that's it. The bleeding is stopped. <laughs> All right, Ella, it's your turn. Okay, wait, is there still one in that other corner? Yeah, they're both in their respective corners. <laughs> that's super convenient. <laughs> okay, this time I'm going to try, uh, we're just going to do a, a ray of frost uh, towards the one in the right corner. Mm-hmm. Like a ranged spell attack. That one I rolled for and I got a nine. A nine does not hit. Dang it. She uh, she grabs the Magitek and shoots the uh, blue-white light that we saw yesterday, uh, but it doesn't hit. So sad. The frog on the right does not appreciate being shot by ice. <laughs> it pulls its short bow up and it aims and it aims at Ella. It rolls a 15. Steve was trying to stand in front of her, <laughs> but I don't know how effective that was as far as providing any cover. <laughs> it should be effective, actually, because you're big, and I thought small creatures do get some sort of cover from being kind of behind medium creatures. We have so few n- small creatures. I think, though, with mage armor, my AC matches. Yeah, but if it matches, they would hit, so we want to see if you get any cover. That way it won't hit. <laughs> Good thinking. Now, I don't know what the issue is of the cover being Steve and not, and would Steve get hit? All right, I'll allow it. Oh, wow. Because he said you were deliberately blocking it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll say Steve standing next to you provides half cover, which gives you plus two to AC. Sweet. So in this case, the arrow flies towards you and Steve. What do you do? Was this the same turn I cast shield or was that last turn? That was a different turn. Different turn. In that case, the the arrow is coming towards me, and I kind of like have my hand behind me because I was still uh, like healing Ella. So I kind of move both of us like just a tiny bit to the left so that it misses. Yep. The other frog puts away its short bow and it pulls out its dagger. And having been from Cayenne's attempted manhandling, it's going to pull out its dagger and try and stab you. Stab Cayenne or stab Steve? It rolls a nine. It does not hit. All right, somehow it misses you, despite the fact that you're huge. He's disoriented. It's back to Cayenne. Seeing these fucking frogs try to attack my friends again and attack me, I get angry again and I rage again. (laughs) And I pull out my giant taco cleaver and I take a big swipe at the one that just tried to stab me. It's fuck them, right? But I can't get good rolls today, so that's an eight. An eight misses. Both of us just... (laughs) Really can't hit each other. Yeah, you guys are just dancing around each other. It's really weird. I'm like, I want to make you into my next taco! I attack. And it's back to Roy! Or Steve. Steve! Steve! Steve, Steve directs the cannon to fire on the uh, creature in the back right. Using his bonus action. That is a 17 to hit. A 17 hits. Nice. The force ballista opens fire. And... Deals 9 force damage. It pushes it against the wall. It's pushed five feet into the wall. Uh, <laughs> however you want to do that. It just, it it hurts. just, it just feels, it just hurts a lot. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's very comical. It's like the legs are, and hands and arms are all like at weird angles. <laughs> For his action, Steve will target the corner of the room. And he should have done this beforehand. But he will cast Fairy Fire. And the creature has to make a dexterity saving throw. The one on the right or the left? The right. He rolls a nat 20. <gasps> 23. Nothing happens to it. All right, Ella, it's your turn. How's the one on the right looking? Not great. <laughs> and the one on the left? Uh, the one on the left is actually doing okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then she's gonna focus on the one on the right again and do another. Um, try try to do another f- ray of frost. See if she rolls better. Ooh, seventeen. Seventeen hits. All right. And she gets four cold damage. Fuck yeah. How's he looking now? Uh, pretty terrible. He's going to try and book it. He leaves. <gasps> but he can't leave fast because his speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of his next turn. Yeah, he hates being cold. It's like he's supposed to be hibernating, but he's not. <laughs> he opens the door heading towards the sewers and starts running down it, but slowly. <laughs> the other frog is going to try and stab Cayenne again. Oh, no. Rolls a 22. 
that does hit. 23, actually. That still hits. Does four damage, piercing damage. And do a constitution saving throw. Okay. Con save is... I think it's gonna get this time. Oh, that's a nat 20. Plus five, so 25. Nice. Yeah, nothing nice. happens. Kyan barely feels it. Yeah, you've gotten many cuts throughout your life as a chef. This is nothing. This is nothing. <laughs> it's your turn, Kyan. I will slice and dice you. And I, I proceed to slice and dice the one that just tried to slice and dice me. Yep. Seems fair. This time. Yes. This time. Okay. That'll be a 16 to hit. A 16 hits. Oh, hell yeah. That'll be a nine damage. All right. It's back to Steve. Steve will have the cannon move 15 feet so it's along the wall and can shoot down the sewer tunnel. Mm-hmm. And he will have the cannon open fire on the fleeing grung. 9 plus 5, 14. 14 does not hit, actually. Oh, no, sad. And then Steve will move away from Ella towards Cayenne and kind of box in the creature in the corner. So he'll be on the along the wall on the right of the creature. All right. Ella, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to try to do the same thing where I try to, like, hit that one is running away. So if I need to... <laughs> fuck, fuck this frog in particular. Yeah, um, he was super rude to me, so... <laughs> yeah, so I move so that I have a, a viewpoint on him running down yeah, the hallway. You move up 30 feet up to the next wall, and you can see this grung very slowly attempt to flee the, the situation. <laughs> I'm going to try the Ray of Frost again. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh my god, nat 20. Nice. Oh, that feels good. All right, all right, little froggy. I got nine cold damage. Yeah. Do you want to describe it? The Magitek shoots out this frigid, freezing beam of light and hits him and turns his singed skin to ice. Let's see. I already did the one where they shatter apart, so he's just going to... <laughs> Heal over. Yeah, the uh, the camera zooms in on the frog's face, and it has like the open mouth, and like it's trying to like run away. Except ice forms from its back, and then like eventually envelops it, and then he just tips over, and he dies. Yeah. <laughs> Preserved for later use in tacos. <laughs> oh God, frog meat. Mm -hmm. Sapient frog meat. Oh no. We don't advertise that part of it though in the menu. <laughs> The last frog is fighting to the death, having seen you murder his friends brutally. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna try and stab Cayenne. And rolls a 21. That hits. It does four piercing damage. And do another constitution saving throw. Con save. Nice, another 20. Nice. Nothing happens. Again, I've cut myself worse making tacos. Taco, taco, tacos. All right, it's back to Cayenne. All right, I would like to attempt again to throw this thing in the pot of boiling water. Okay. Grapple check will be... Okay, that's, that's good. That will be either... Either 22... All right, 22. 22. He rolls a 20 on his dexterity check. Ah, not good enough. You grappled the grung. What will the process of throwing it into the pot of boiling water look like, Joey? I'll just allow you to do it. Okay, I like toss him in the pot of boiling water, and I'm like, ah, yes, yeah, time to make this very, uh, I was gonna say al dente. <laughs> That's yeah. what the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, boiled frog will be great for the customers. Some of the hot water splashes up, and the, the gnome that is dangling from the rope struggles a little bit. And it does 15 damage to the frog. <laughs> Jesus Christ! The frog really doesn't like this. Is the frog still going? No. It makes a very sad ribbit, and it dies. And it becomes boiled frog. <laughs> I can't even do the sound. Final <laughs> Fantasy 1. <laughs> yep. The last frog expires into the boiling vat of sewage water. And the three of you take a hot second to catch your breaths. Shouldn't we, you know, get the nice lady down from the rope? Yeah, uh, Cayenne, you're the tallest. What? <laughs> How does Cayenne transition from... 
Kyan looks very scary right now. <laughs> Kyan, get her down, but be gentle. Eh. All right, Kyan comes out of his rage. He's like, eh, sorry, I got a little uh, carried away there. So, you know, uh, what? Get her down. Okay, I, I get her down. You get her down, but she's still sort of tied up and can't really say anything. I, like, pull out my giant fucking cleaver, and I'm like, hey, I don't want to hurt her, but this is, like, the sharpest thing I have. I can picture Kyan just, like, saying, hold very still. This won't hurt a bit. Yes, I promise I will get you out. Is it just, like, cutting taco shells? Yeah, you cut the ropes. Nice. <laughs> Listen, I know you had a really weird day, but it is uh, time to get to work. <laughs> How do we, you see the apparent account manager a female gnome who is wearing pink pajamas and big round glasses her red hair is just wild all over having had to dangle over some boiling sewage water for possibly several hours and she says thanks for getting me out of that jam that wasn't jam that was water yeah tomato tomato no it is only tomato diced you're welcome i say with like just blood trickling down again <laughs> She ignores you and heads over to one of these paintings that have the mushroom growing out of it. Is she just staring at it or what? Yeah, she's just checking up on it. Oh, what's with the mushrooms, I ask? She says, oh, it's just a project I've been working on. What does that mean, I ask? She says, you see, I'm creating this thing called non-fungible fungi tokens. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> you were right. I somehow called it. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's hilarious uh, what yeah it's it's sort of hard to explain you see it's a it's a it's a kind of magic mushroom that grows from art and it's unique and it lasts forever and it has a certain value to it you had me at the mushroom and then you lost me afterwards so what i'm trying to do is trying to have the non-fungible fungi token be associated with one piece of art, but it can be the same piece of art. See, like, she points to the paintings that are around in her little maintenance area, and the paintings are all the same. But the one the mushroom is growing out of is in a corner, and it's the only one that has a mushroom on it. And then she continues, yeah, so, like, even if there's multiple copies of art, there's one that can have value to it. And then you can trade this mushroom for money. <laughs> Kyan sits down. What inspired you to do this? Well, yeah, one day I was exploring the sewers and I noticed that the grungs keep this sort of special mushroom, so I stole one. It turns out these mushrooms really like art. Yeah, I don't know how to explain an M NFT without it there being a digital component. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to think of a mushroom pun this whole time. Come on, blank. <laughs> Come on, guys. I, I, I spent like three hours setting this up. Uh, There's a mushroom growing out of... The painting, which makes it more valuable than the other paintings that have a mushroom on it, or no? Yeah, the, the mushroom only grows out of the, the unique original painting. <laughs> it's a 3D mushroom. Yep. <laughs> this makes total sense, and it makes as much sense as the real <laughs> NFT. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Just like, I don't understand what the inherent value of the one that has a mushroom growing on it. Like, why would you want that instead of the one just reproducing a copy of the mushroom painting? And like, what makes this one more valuable? Oh, nothing. <laughs> it just has a mushroom growing out of it. So can we have our money or not? <laughs> um, who, who are you? Businessman. <laughs> Yeah, to explain, we are here because we heard you're the account manager at the bank, and you're the only person in all of Falcon's Reach who can help us open a bank account. And you know, we're just trying to start a cute little taco stand, and uh, so we need your help. Oh yeah, I could definitely do that for you. Awesome. We don't need to invest in this painting, do we, to do so? <laughs> I mean, would you like to? Not really. Mushrooms kind of gross me out. But look at how much value it has. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just saying it has value and like who's who's actually assigning value to that? Well, like the mushroom uh, is. <laughs> do you know if any of the paintings have a painting of a dog or of tacos? Well, I would you... buy a painting of tacos. That would be high value. 
You take a look around the room, and the paintings are all duplicates of cats. <laughs> so yeah, are some of them are some of them all... eating like a like a pizza and like uh, no 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 <laughs> they're they're all the same identical painting of cats. Okay, like two cats. One of them is black, and one of them is orange, and one of them keeps, like, hissing. Okay. So, why did you choose to reproduce this cat image a bunch? Well, this cat image is pretty popular right now. But, you know, if you could own the original, I bet lots of people would pay for that. Yeah, because it is the original? But they could still make a copy of the copy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sure your personal enjoyment greatly increases if you get the original one and pay a, a lot more money for it. I see. I get it now. This is the worst description of NFTs possible. <laughs> I, actually, I think it's probably the best. You know, it really <laughs> cameras the point home. All right. So just so I understand, you're trying to make money off of owning the original image of this mushroom and this cat, but then you also have a bunch of copies of the cat cats. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right, scratch that if that was confusing. <laughs> they were described to me as like the digital version of like baseball card collecting, but I don't know if that's a good uh, um, way of describing so, it. So, uh, I guess not bad. So, like, the things that NFTs are being used for right now are is, is basically like that, but. It's just like a unique way of identifying a digital click object. Yeah. That's like verifiable, right? Yeah. But the only thing people are using it for are like cat photos and Yes, I know very little, memes. But that that does that matches up with what I've learned. Anyways. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for saving me from getting boiled. I guess do you want this mushroom? So like do we get the mushroom and the painting? No, you just get the mushroom. Just the mushroom. Yeah, you don't own the rights to the painting or anything. Just the mushroom. Yeah, but you get the it's it's the mushroom that represents the original painting. So you own that. Mm -hmm. And for some reason that's valuable and other people might want to buy it from us to own it one day. <laughs> I mean, do you want the mushroom or not? <laughs> I mean, sure, uh... but also not really. <laughs> it's it's also really tasty. Oh, I don't like Ooh, mushrooms. Well, hold on. Uh, how tasty are we talking? Uh, well, I mean, those frog creatures, like, came here to kill me to take it back, so. And how much is this, uh, fun guy, uh, token, uh, going for? D mm, depends on who you ask. Okay, I'm asking you. <laughs> no, 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 Cayenne, we get that for saving her. Oh, okay. Yeah, we take. And you give us a bank account? Oh, yeah, I can do that, too. My name's Rosemary, by the way. Oh, sorry. I didn't introduce myself. Hi, I'm Ella. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Steve. Uh, I am Kyan. She looks at her magical watch, and she's like, oh, I guess I'm late for work. Yeah, Harry? Henry? What, what did he say his name was? Harvey, I think. Har Har yeah, Harvey said you were late for work. Oh, well, that's not good. Well, I'm gonna go get dressed. She pushes her glasses against her nose and heads back in the direction of her apartment. Completely nonplussed that her secret tunnel has been destroyed and that there were frogs attempting to murder her. Uh, how's the frog that I boiled? Is it? Does he look? Does it look tasty? In a weird cannibalistic way, yes. Also, it was in sewer water, so yeah, um, that's right. Not sanitary. But is there a pleasant? Is there a pleasant boiled frog scent? You're oh. mildly inspired. Do I take inspiration? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, but it's only for cooking checks. Okay, that's fair. I wish I could add that into D and D Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys do? Hello. Do you guys want to get some lunch and then go to the bank to finalize our business account? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yes. I'm feeling much better. <laughs> Ella says once again, covered in blood. Covered in her own blood. Love it. Do you guys just hang out outside Rosemary's? apartment or and we, we get some food mm -hmm. while we wait yeah you head down the street and you get some food joey what kind of food is available in this part of town mm. oh, God. <laughs> this is important <laughs> there is a fantasy souls mart and you can get everything that's at the souls mart it's mostly processed things pre-packaged sandwiches anybody yep okay great we eat yeah a couple of minutes later rosemary comes out and she has 
somehow managed to turn into a very prim and proper businesswoman who is apparently the account manager for the local branch of the Bank of Fountains Reach. She's wearing a very classy business suit, and her glasses are now gone, magically. And as she enters the Souls Mart to say hi to you guys, she's like, Ahem, shall we continue our business at the bank? Yes, please. Yes. Mm-hmm. She gives you a very long-winded explanation of NFFTs as she, <laughs> as the group heads towards the bank. No one understands what she's talking about. Nift. Nift. You guys go through the same security process and enter the bank. Rosemary sets you down, and then she says, All I need is the documentation for your business name, proving that you are a government-sanctioned entity. Great, says stare Ella. At Ella. She pulls it out from her backpack bag. Jansport. Jansport. Yeah. <laughs> As she fills out the form, and I'll just give like another explanation, she says, yeah, by doing the business banking, you limit your personal liability by splitting your business funds from your personal funds. This also allows merchant services to give you certain protections for your customers. Your customers can also pay your business instead of you, and it allows your employees to operate on your behalf. We have an optional line of credit for emergencies, if you need it. <laughs> guys, do we need it? Yeah. Would you guys like that line of credit now? Yes, please. Okay, usually I would offer an interest rate of... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God, no. Of 2.54% to 7% for businesses with a lot of collateral. But seeing how you guys have none, that could go up to something absurd because we live in a corporate-dominated life. But, like, what if we work something out? You know, like how we... Had sort of saved your life earlier? I mean, I feel like that's worth something. Yeah, you pr you kept me from getting boiled alive, so I could probably give you an interest rate of about 3%. That sounds good to me. Okay, how much of a line of credit would you like to take? Let's that's see. That's a great question. Did Ella, <laughs> did Ella do any, like, market research to figure out, like, how, uh, how much it costs to start a taco <laughs> stand in Falcon's Reach? Uh, how about we say 275,000 gold? It feels like a lot of gold for this world. That sounds good to me. But sure. Why not? Okay, just remember that if you can't make your monthly payment plan, very, very bad things will happen to you. <laughs> uh, where does it say that in the contract? She pulls out the contract. It's about 50 pages long. All right. It includes magical curses and other very unsavory things. Yikes. Ella looks at the other two. All right. You guys ready for this? I wasn't nervous until just this moment. Yeah, you know, it's all about making the taco stand. We need money, you know, to make the taco stand. I guess if it doesn't work, I could kill off his character and make another one that's not in debt. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do it. Yeah, but that's not real real life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. This either is the dumbest decision we've ever made or the smartest. And we'll find out soon. It'll be fine. There's a space on the contract for the business representative of the LLC. I don't know if that's factual or not, but now it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, Ella looks at the other two and says, Still okay with putting me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Ella writes in her name. Yeah. You write in your name and a very foreboding feeling <laughs> <laughs> creeps into your mind as you do so. That's a wonderful feeling to have when you're starting a business venture. <laughs>